Sportsnet. Brought to you by Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. And by the all-new, completely re-engineered 2014 Acura MDX. The luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Welcome to the Address Center. The roof is open. It's a overcast night, but a beautiful night. Comfortable to 23 degrees. The second of three games against the Los Angeles Dodgers. The first place Los Angeles Dodgers. Now it's time for the starting lineup. Brought to you by Quaker State. Real, durable oil. Well, the Dodgers had their hit and shoes on last night. They scored 14 runs on 16 hits. Top of the order is the same. Carl Crawford, Yasiel Puig. Adrian Gonzalez has had a good run against the Blue Jays for his career. 307 average with nine home runs and 32 RBIs. And the Ramirez is the DH tonight. He here is in center field. Mark Ellis has been a longtime American leader. He's on a four-game hit streak. He's eight for 15 during that stretch of double and two RBIs. And as we mentioned last night, the Dodgers really put on a show with their bats. And a tough job for Todd Redman to slow down this team. He was claimed off waivers by the Blue Jays right at the end of March. Went to AAA, made five starts. This is his third start with the Blue Jays this season. This is first appearance versus the Dodgers. He has pitched just nine innings in his first two starts, but the Blue Jays have won both of those games. Take a look at the defense behind Todd Radman. It's Melky Cabrera in left. Rajay Davis makes his fifth start in the center. Bautista's in right. The Rosa and Reyes on the left side. Lorian Carnacion on the right side. And J.P. Aaron Seavey is behind the plate. For Todd Redmond, left-hander on the mound for the Dodgers. Roger Davis gets the start in center field, showing off his big speed. First pitch of the ball game is up and away for a ball. Carl Crawford, the leadoff man. Crawford in last night's game had three hits. He was three for five, drove in a pair. Average at 284 for the season. Crawford, of course, knows this ballpark very well. Played nine and a half seasons with the Tampa Bay Rays in the American League East. Looked good out in left field yesterday defensively, and you mentioned those three hits. This is a big night, I think, for Todd Redman. He's got to give the Blue Jays some innings after they went through all of those relievers last night. Six of them. Redman's got to give them six or seven innings. All but Juan Perez pitched last night on the Blue Jays' pin. Ground ball. Encarnacion takes it. He'll go to the bag and beat Crawford. One down. Time now for the scouting report brought to you by TD Bank. Proud sponsor of your Toronto Blue Jays. For Todd Redman, he's going to use his fastball. He's got to spot it. He's got to put it where he needs to. That is down and down and away. He'll use a slider and a little bit of a changeup. Off of that slider, batters are hitting just 206. It's going to be a big pitch for him, especially against these right handed hitters going to be better off if he can pitch ahead right handed left hand doesn't make any difference he's got to pitch ahead Yasiel Puig tonight in right field and Redmond misses up and away Puig was one for five in the game last night a couple more strikeouts but you can see he's off to a great start 364 tried to hold up and fouls it into the seats a little indecisive right now at the plate we had a chance to watch him this afternoon hit against Ted Lilly in a a game, a simulated game, and he looked okay. But right now he's a little in between, drove in his first run since July the 4th yesterday. Talk about in between from your perspective as a former hitter. Well, you tell yourself, hey, I'm going to start swinging and you're, you're, just, you're not seeing the baseball before you start your swing. And you're susceptible to a lot of breaking balls and a lot of pitches that are going to be outside the strike zone. He might be better off just spreading out just a little bit more and waiting before he, he sees the ball before he starts swinging. Two and two. Cut on and missed. Peak strikes out. Two quick outs for Todd Redmond here in the first. Teams are starting to get a book on Yasiel Puig, and it's don't throw him a strike. Throw him a breaking ball away, especially with two strikes. You can see him leaking out there just a little bit too much. That is a quick swing right there. When that front shoulder gets out there quickly. So with two outs, Adrian Gonzalez, the first baseman, will step in. Gonzalez, we mentioned, is 307 career average against the Blue Jays. There's a first pitch strike from Redmond. Gonzalez in his first full season with the Dodgers. 
he came to Los Angeles in that big trade with the Boston Red Sox last season. He was a former first pick overall in the 2000 draft. He was taken by the Florida Marlins. They wanted to make a splash and they did. That was a huge trade with the Red Sox cleared a lot of space for the Red Sox to go out and do what they've done this year. Signing Mike Napoli, Shane Victorino, Ryan Dempster. Foul back. They brought in Stephen Drew and they brought in a bunch of character guys and turned things around in Boston. At the same time, the Dodgers, they feel like they got a couple of key players in Carl Crawford and Adrian Gonzalez. They also got Josh Beckett in that deal, but he's out for the season with an injury. Star players. That's what you need in Los Angeles. It is Hollywood, that's for sure. And right now, the Dodgers are the darlings of Hollywood, having leapfrogged the Diamondbacks into first place. Carl Crawford finally healthy again and doing his thing at the top of the Dodger order. One and two. On the ground, Reyes positioned perfectly. Easy inning for Todd Redmond. The Dodgers retired in order. Let's go to the bottom of the first. Reyes will lead things off when we come back. It's not a dramatic move, but it's one that a lot of people thought was long overdue. Jose Reyes, Belki Cabrera in the two spot, and now Jose Bautista back in the third spot against Chris Capuano. He's 5 for 15, fair doubles, a home run, two RBIs. Then down in the order, Rajay Davis. He leads the team with a 338 average against left handed pitching, and that's what he'll deal with tonight against Chris Capuano. Capuano found his way back into the rotation. He took Stephen Fife's spot right before the All-Star break. Six of the third scoreless innings against the Rockies in that last start. He has made five starts in which he has allowed one run or fewer. A veteran, he's been around. He's got great numbers on the road. Those inflated numbers are pitching at home. He'll try and trick you. Fastball, curveball, a little bit of a changeup. So the Blue Jays are going to have to be ready for that. The Dodgers for the season have not played well on the field, but we have seen they're starting to play a bit better. Carl Crawford with a gold glove. Andre Ethers in center field. He was the DH last night, and Yasiel Puig is in right. Jerry Hairston Jr. starts at third. Nick Punto is the shortstop. Ellis and Gonzalez on the right side. And the backup catcher, Tim Fedorovich, is behind the plate for Chris Capuano. And a whole new left side for the Dodgers tonight. We saw Hanley Ramirez and Juan Uribe last night, short and third. Tonight it's Nick Punto and the veteran. Jerry Hairston Jr. making his 12th start at third base for the Dodgers. They've got some interchangeable parts, but both Punto and Hairston are veteran players. Last night, Hairston came in the game as a defensive replacement in left field. So that'll be the top of the order for the Jays. Reyes, Cabrera, and Bautista. Chris Capuano. Last pitch here at Rogers Center in 2005. His best season when he won 18 games for Milwaukee. Reyes has seen Capuano in the past. He's 5 for 17, a 294 career average against the Dodger left hander. Yeah. 
Ball on a strike. Reyes finished up the night 0 for 4 last night. Blue Jays were held to five runs. They had 13 hits, but it was a lopsided affair as the Dodgers won the opener. And a left-hander last night. Ryu pitching. Capuano a little bit different. He'll try and go both sides of the plate like Ryu did last night, but he's much more effective with his changeup. Don't look for much. You don't have to. That fastball is only about 88, 89 miles an hour now. This has popped up. It looked like a changeup. Nick Punto backs up and makes the catch. One down. Let's see what else that Chris Capuano has to feature as his scouter report says fastball 56% of the time. Again, about 88, 89 miles an hour. He's got a little bit of a cutter that he'll mix in there. A curveball and a changeup is his second effective pitch off the changeup to hit 266. And he's getting more strikeouts and swings and misses with his changeup this year. Capuano is 34 years old. This is his second season with the Dodgers. He's had nine big league seasons under his belt. Melky Cabrera takes the first pitch strike. I just find it so interesting that the Los Angeles Dodgers had eight, maybe nine starters when spring training started. Capuano wasn't one of them. But with injuries and effectiveness, trades, here he is. Well, we mentioned Josh Beckett's on the disabled list. Stephen Fife is just now rehabbing. He's getting close to coming back. Ted Lilly is ready to come back. It's just a matter of time before they activate Ted Lilly. So Don Madden has got a few options that they're going to have to make decisions on. Cranky, of course, was out early in the season with a broken collarbone. They traded Eric Harang, who was with this team early this season. Another big arm they're missing is Chad Billingsley. And Billingsley has been gone since April 10th. And prospects of him coming back yeah. aren't good. Sounds like he's out for the season as well. You know what they have, though? They've got a 1 and a 1A at the top of their starting rotation. Clayton Kershaw and Zach Grinke. Bear jumps back from an inside pitch. It's 2-2. Two and two. Kershaw will not pitch in this series. He won his ninth game on Sunday. Beating the Nationals in Washington. Zach Greinke has won five of his last six starts. He's 5-0 and oh over his last six starts. They're both throwing the ball very well. On the ground, Punto with the backhand writes himself and in time, two down. Well, we showed the left side of the infield for a reason tonight because when Capuano is on, you're going to get a lot of ground balls. And with the right-handers that the Blue Jays have in the lineup, you're going to see a lot of ground balls. Dodgers played some great defense in last night's game. Nick Punto gets them off to a good start here. He rounds into that ball and sets himself. He knows who's running. Noki Cabrera is not running that well. So Punto, the veteran, has been around and sets himself and fires a strike over to first. Punto is now 35 years old. Two outs for Jose Bautista. He takes the first pitch strike. Bautista batting third. Just the 32nd game in which he's hit third. Hit the majority of the season, season batting in the two spot. Do you like him better in the third spot as opposed to batting second? You know, I like him in the third spot. When there's guys on base in front of him, I thought that he was coming up too many times in the number two spot without enough runners on base. When you turn the lineup over and you're hitting second, that eight and nine guy, they've got to be on base, and they just haven't been for the Jays. Long, deep drive, but well foul. That's, the a, second deck. that's a form of protection for Jose Bautista when there's guys on base. They have to pitch to him. Yeah, that's probably the best form of protection, get those leadoff guys on board. He's got the ultimate guy behind him in Edwin Encarnacion with his 26 home runs. So John Gibbons has dropped Bautista down into that third spot, pushed Encarnacion and Lynn back another slot in the batting order. You know, for tonight against the left-hander, Rajay Davis would have looked nice hitting in that number two hole with the speed that he has, and if he's on base. You know Jose's going to get more fastballs with Reyes and Davis in front of him, but they've elected to put Melky Cabrera 
in front of Jose tonight. Just my two cents worth. Probably worth just one. No, it's worth a lot more than that. But you're right. And, you know, the perception has been throughout the years that your best hitter is your third hitter. Altice is a 50 home run guy, two time home run champ. And you'd like to get him up in the first inning. And batting third, he'll do that. 22 home runs and just 58 RBIs. That tells me he's not hitting his home runs with people on base. Full count. He'll take the walk. So Bautista is aboard with the two out walk, and that'll bring Edwin Encarnacion to the plate. Bautista, patient enough to take the walk, has drawn the two out walk, and it gets Encarnacion to the plate. With a man at first. Bautista, 53 walks on the season. That puts him into the third spot in the American League behind Miguel Cabrera and Carlos Santana of the Indians. And he can take his walks because he's got Edwin behind him. Fedorovich does a nice job on that ball in the dirt. He's a good catcher, handles the pitchers well, blocks the ball well. The regular catcher, of course, is... A.J. Ellis, who had a career night at the plate last night. But Fedorovich is a very confident backup catcher. And he can throw, too. Going out 50% of the runners against him. Both of these catchers throw very well. A.J. Ellis has the best average among regular catchers in the majors at throwing out base runners over 46%. And I asked Ellis about that yesterday, and he complimented his pitching staff. He said, I got three left-handers in the rotation, first of all. And they're all very good at giving me an opportunity to make good throws. And Fedorovich, as well, has taken advantage of that. And they've got good moves, like the guy on the mound. Got one of the best moves in baseball. Capuano has 27 pickoffs in his career since he came up. He had 12 pitching for the Brewers in... 2005, his best season. He had an 18 win season that year. Off the plate, it's 3 0. I don't think he's going to challenge him. He'll take his chances now that he has fallen behind with that guy right there, Adam Lynn. I'd be shocked if he challenges it with a fastball here. 3 0, Bautista at first, two outs. He throws him a fastball in a pretty good spot. Just 88 miles an hour. Capiano has given up seven home runs. All to right-handed hitters. Right-handers have hit 297 against him. Capiano is back into the count at three and two. He is not a power pitcher by any means. He's got confidence to throw that off speed pitch. He might get it even on a full count. Getting more strikeouts and swings and misses with his change up this season. Bautista will be off on the pitch. Two outs. There he goes. Popped in the air into shallow right. Puig broke back, but now he's recovered. He gets there and makes the catch. The inning is over. Blue Jays leave a base runner. He played a scoreless inning here at Rogers Center.
you by the new Blackberry Z10 and Q10, built to keep you moving. You want to see a couple of hot months? How about Hanley Ramirez, June and July? June, an on-base percentage, 414 with an OPS of over 1,000. Well, he's better than that in July. On-base percentage of almost 500, 1,200 for the OPS. 39 games, 30 RBIs, and everything he's hitting, he's hitting hard. And there's another one just foul. He didn't waste any time. Ramirez rips it foul down the left field line. He's DHing tonight. Just the ninth time in his career he has been the DH. Doesn't seem to affect him at all. He's had a 323 average with a homer and six RBIs. Second time this year. And good hitters, they get into these streaks where they see the ball and hit everything hard. The good ones, it goes on for a long time. The mediocre ones, it lasts maybe a week or yeah. two. Or a couple of games. You're right. There's a strike. Dodgers are getting their first look at Todd Redmond. Don't have an awful lot of information other than the video. Of course, they want to have some first-hand information. Step in the box and see what they're dealing with. And you might see a few of those. Pitches like we just saw from Redmond. Fastball right down the middle. And Ramirez take it. That time it looked like he dropped down a yeah, little I bit. Yeah, he did. We hadn't seen much of that. Of course, we haven't seen much of Redmond. Two and two, nobody out. Try three call. Redmond popped the outside corner. Hanley Ramirez wasn't really sure if it was a strike, but he'll walk back. One down. As a reminder, the bridge will be on tomorrow at 10 p.m. 8 Mountain Time on FX Canada. Reminder, it's not available on Bell. That's the bridge tomorrow, 10 p.m. Eastern Time on FX Canada. One down, second strikeout for Todd or Edmund. Andre Ethier takes a strike. Eighth year is in center field tonight. He is making his 30th start in the center. Remember, Matt Kemp is still hobbling around with that bad ankle. Had a big game yesterday, a couple of doubles. Now eight straight seasons, over 20 doubles. He was two for six, scored three runs. Hit into a double play and struck out twice. Ball on his strike. Pops this one back over the Blue Jays. Dugout and out of play. Ethier is the longest tenured Dodger. This is his eighth season in L.A. He was a second round pick originally by the Oakland Athletics way back in 2003. He came to the Dodgers in a offseason trade in 2005. He's a two time all star. He's also won a gold glove. That came in 2011. And had a great interview to end last night's game. Boy, didn't he? <laughs> Talking to our Arash Madani. He was outstanding. Yeah, he sure was. And he was very insightful. He was succinct with his answers. I complimented him today prior to the game. One of the better interviews we've heard all year. Shoots this one foul down the left side. But Ethier, you know, he's one of these guys who say, well, we got too many outfielders, especially when Puig came up first week of June. But he's backbone of this ball club. He might not be the star player. You can say that about Matt Kemp and Hanley Ramirez. But boy, oh boy, he is a valuable part of this team. He drives this one to right. Bautista makes a head high catch. Ethier hit it hard. Five straight retired by Todd Redman. He's got the type of swing that's going to generate a lot of base hits because he doesn't over swing it's very short he could use the whole field got him off and running yesterday with that double Mark McGuire in his first year as the Dodger hitting coach of course McGuire grew up in Southern California played his college baseball at USC still lives down in Southern California lives in Orange County and he's thrilled to be back in Southern County Mark Ellis takes the first pitch strength. Mitch Ellis has got a mini four-game hit streak alive. 
Eight for his last 15. Well, Redmond's doing exactly what John Gibbons wanted, throwing strikes and working quickly. You mentioned it. The Blue Jays used six relievers last night. All but Juan Perez pitched in the game, so they need Redmond to pitch deep into this game. Get in, get out, especially this first time through. Don't show them too much. Just keep pumping those fastballs in there. These are the kind of days right here where you can't use pitches to set people up. Just go and attack them. You might see that your pitch count is low and you can get deeper in the game. He's only thrown 30 pitches now trying to finish off the second inning. And he does 31 pitches and he is through two innings. He set down six straight Dodgers. He has three strikeouts. When we come back, it'll be Adam Lynn, the lefty, then Mark DeRosa and Rajay Davis. Scoreless here at Rogers Center. Swing in to fire safety is presented by Allstate. Big Blue Jays catcher J.P. Aaron Cedia Wednesday, July 24th from noon to 1. It's at Toronto Fire Hall number 133, 1505 Lawrence Avenue West. J.P. will assist Toronto firefighters in distributing team sets of Blue Jays baseball cards to kids 14 and under. Ace the mascot of the Blue Jays games will also be set up for the children to enjoy. That's Wednesday, July 24th at Toronto Fire Hall, number 133. Adam Lynn takes one for a ball. Lynn's average over 300. You could hear Mike Everett call ball two on that pitch that was outside. I like umpires that are loud and Definitive in their call. Tell you where it is. Ball low outside. So everybody can hear it. You do it with confidence. Makes the pitcher feel good. Makes the catcher very aware of what you're doing. And the batter knows as well. Did you ever get a chance to catch with Dutch Renner? No, I didn't. You know who I'm talking yeah, about. The National League. The loudest <laughs> strike call in the history of baseball, I think. Jim Joyce is right there. Yeah, yeah. Jim Joyce different. is uh, very animated and vocal when he calls that strike. Yeah, we got that firsthand just the other day. Free one to link. He was lighting up our field mic, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> to turn it down. Mark DeRosa will be next. DeRosa with his second straight start with the two left handers opening up. This series. Full count to Lynn. 
fouled into the glove. Fedorovich held on for the first strikeout of the night for Chris Capuano. Capuano will show you a fastball here or there, and I think if you want to look for it and sit on it, do it early in the count. But when you get three and two, three and one, he's going to throw you the breaking ball like he does right there to Adam Lip. Sliders to the lefties, change ups to the right handers with two strikes. DeRosa makes the first pitch in there for a strike. Mark had a good night last night. He had a pair of singles, a double. He was three for four and scored a run. And an opposite field double that bounced out of play for a ground rule double. DeRosa just 0 for four against Capuano. He's got a great approach at the plate. Keeps that front shoulder in and watch his front foot dive towards the plate. That helps him keep that front shoulder in there. I think by doing that, you will keep your head very still and quiet. Give yourself a chance to see the ball a little bit better. Saw that one pretty well. <laughs> Was close to his eyes. <laughs> he felt that one too, right up under his chin. But that one got away from Capuano. He wanted that ball down and away. And the approach that DeRosa has right now is going to be a good approach against Capuano. He stays on this one and drives it to right. Puig is there. Two quick outs for Capuano here in the second. DeRosa knew where. Capuano was going, but he couldn't do much more than drive it to the right fielder. Got out in front just a hair. Watch the front foot go towards the plate. Close toe, stays behind that ball. He knows that that's where Capuano wants to get him, and he stayed right through it. Just couldn't power it enough over his head. Rajay Davis. A 338 average against lefty pitching. That's the best on the Blue Jays. Takes his strength. Davis has two hits and two at bats against the Dodger lefty. Bottom of the second inning. Been looking for our first hit of the ball game. Capuano is one of those guys you and I would refer to him as being a comfortable. Lefty. Doesn't do anything really that overpowers you, but boy, oh boy, he never gives you a pitch at the same speed in the same location. Just mixes it up. Got a little bit of Charlie Liebrand in him, left hander who fades his change up. And then you start looking for that ball out there. You start thinking about that change up and tries to buzz you inside with that fastball. Yeah, and guys like Capuano and Lee Brown, they really have to read the hitter. They have to be aware of what the hitter is doing at the plate and try to counteract that. Just inside Pedrovich <laughs> heard Mike Everett with that loud call and may have thought it was strike three. Like he took a step toward the dugout. A little bit of a sheepish grin on his face. Watch the catcher. Yes, sir. Oh, no. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> Not Man. trying to show anybody up, right? Well, here's another 3 2 pitch. Aaron CB on deck. Davis trying to get a board for him, keep the inning going. It's only been one base runner in the ballgame. That was Bautista. He had a two out walk in the first. Off speed pitch and another foul tip. Fedorovich held on to it. Two strikeouts in the inning. Blue Jays go down in order in the second. We'll move to the third. It'll be Jerry Hairston Jr. starting things off against Todd Redmond when we come back.
A 12 foot statue was unveiled outside the ballpark in honor of the late Ted Rogers and Neil Mohammed, the CEO and president of Rogers Communications, threw out the first pitch to Mark Burley. Ted Rogers' family was on hand. His wife Loretta with the family and the beautiful 12 foot bronze statue was unveiled outside gate six to honor the legacy of Ted Rogers, the leader of Rogers Communication, and he had such a great vision about the Blue Jays and how important they were to the community, and he will always be remembered and honored with that great statue outside of Gate 6. Rogers Stadium, Rogers Center. Jerry Hairston pops it up in front of home plate. Encarnacion, the first baseman, took charge. A lot of indecision there. And Sevier, Redmond, and DeRosa were happy to hear Edwin say, I got it. <laughs> That's happened a few times now over the last week or so. That pop up right in the middle of four defenders. Jay Pierre and Sevier, the catcher. That's really not his ball. It's too far out in front. The two corner infielders are going to come down and the pitcher that's where he becomes a traffic cop and he says okay first baseman you take it Tim Fedorovich the catcher makes a first pitch strike Fedorovich originally drafted by the Boston Red Sox in 2008 he was a seventh round pick he played collegiately at the University of North Carolina he was acquired on with Stephen Fife and Juan Rodriguez for Trayvon Robinson in July of 2011. Bounced up the middle off the glove of Redmond and Fedorovich can have an infield single. See, first hit of the ball game. Redmond had a shot at it. Looked like he got a glove on it, but that's all he did, just deflected it. A little comeback practice right there. Falling off the mound, and it was hit to his pitching arm side and he had to reach back over could come up with it cleanly. Nick Punto shortstop batting ninth in this lineup this evening. Goes after the first pitch and swings right through it. Mention Punto he's 35 years old. Got over 10 years of major league service. Signed originally with the Philadelphia Phillies. Played a couple of seasons, 2001, 2002, and 2003 with Philadelphia before moving on to Minnesota. He's also played with the Cardinals, Boston, and now with the Dodgers. On the ground, Laurie comes after it quickly to Reyes for one. No time for two. Ball wouldn't hit that sharply, and Fedorovich did a good job with the hard slide into second. Two outs. Blue Jays on Sportsnet. Brought to you by the all-new completely re-engineered 2014 Acura MDX. The luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Two outs. Carl Crawford, leadoff man. Crawford rounded out to the first baseman. His first time up. Nick Punto at first. Crawford takes one inside. Three for four in stolen bases. Nick Punto. Two outs here in the third inning. You got Crawford at the plate. Depending on the count, you might see Don Mattingly try and start the runner here. He gets thrown out. Carl Crawford starts the fourth inning. It all depends on the count. If he falls behind 0 and 2, not a bad time to start the runner. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Go ahead and roll the dice a bit. Aaron CB has not had a good year throwing out base runners. He's caught just five all season long. Jim Wallach, the former Expo, is the third base coach. Going through the signs for Punto and Crawford. 2 and 0. Not running. Cut on a miss. Snap throw to first. Good tag by Ernest Jill. 
Quinto just snuck his hand under the tag. It was a good tag because it was an aggressive tag by Encarnacion. You slap that thing down there as hard as you can. Looked like he caught him in the elbow. Here comes Punto. Go to the outside part of the bag. Catch that corner. Watch Edwin slap that thing down. Drill him right in the elbow. Boy, that was close. We're literally first base umpire right on top of the play. Foul back. It's two and two. Fans, if you want your baseball questions answered by a team of experts, email ask the experts at sportsnet.ca and keep your eye out for the home hardware ask the experts segment later on in this game. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. This is driven into center. Rajay Davis has an easy play. He makes the catch. Crawford's retired. Dodgers are done in their half of the third. No score. by Baseball Canada and Little League Canada. Moncton, New Brunswick, August 8th, 9th, and 10th at Kiwanis Park. The instructors include the Hall of Fame of Roberto Alaba, Homer Bush, Jesse Barfield, Juan Benitez, and Dwayne Ward. Visit BlueJays.com slash Baseball Academy for more information. The Toronto Blue Jays are proud supporters of amateur baseball across Canada. Dwayne Ward is in town, and boy, does he do a good job with those Blue Jays on the Super Camps. He is the driving force behind the Super Camps, and he gets all the players to come back and contribute their time and efforts. Talking to him this afternoon, and I said, hey, Ward, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Okay, I want to get you there at 7.30. We're going to be there. This is what we're going to do. He was fired up oh, yeah. today about tomorrow's camp. J.P. Aaron Sebia goes after the first pitch and fouls it back. Yeah, Ward has done a great job with those clinics, and tell you what, kids get a Full day of enthusiasm from Dwayne Ward and the rest of you guys. You'll be involved for the next three days right here yep, Frank at Rogers Cattle, Center. Frank Catalanato's in town. Jose Cruz Jr., Sean Green. I heard the original Shakers in town, Lloyd oh. Mosby. Shaker, he'll be breaking it down for the kids. He does a good job, too. He too is enthusiastic about that. Yes, Juan Guzman. Goose. Saw Goose today. Ball and a strike to Aaron Sevier. Ball right in on his hands, and there's a new, another good example of just how difficult it is for hitters to hit that inside strike. 87 miles an hour, and JP just couldn't get it going. Doesn't matter how hard you throw, but you got to throw it in there. Petrovic does a good job of keeping that ball in front of him. Well, he went right to his knees and plugged up that five hole. Really helps a pitcher when you can confidently throw a ball up there and it might bounce, and you know that the catcher is going to keep it in front of him. 
especially with two strikes. Here's another one. First thing he does is go to his knees. He's not worried about catching it. He's mindful of just keeping the ball in front of him. When you say the five hole, all that is is right between the legs. You know, you got to. That's the first thing you have to cover up. Go down to the knees. Use your arms, glove, everything right there just to kind of cover that up so it doesn't go back to the backstop. And it's got to give pitchers a lot of confidence to throw a curveball in the dirt or change up in the dirt like that. Do you remember when Bruce Hurst and Roger Clemens first started throwing the splitter? Yep. Rich Gedman was their catcher. And he was a wall of granite behind there, and it would bounce that splitter pitch after pitch after pitch. Nothing got away. And we'd swing at it every time. <laughs> <laughs> I know I would. I did too. <laughs> Jack Morris always talks about Lance Parrish and Mike Heath, two of his catchers in Detroit, that could block that football when he was learning how to throw that pitch. And for Morris, he never intended to throw it for a strike, he was going to bounce it. But he was confident his catchers could always keep it in front. Do that with two strikes it just gives you so much confidence. Another full count pitch to Aaron Seabay hit on the ground. Jerry Hairston Jr. makes an easy play of it, one down. The all new, completely re engineered 2014 Acura MDX, the luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Beautiful night. The roof wide open at Rogers Center. Number nine hitter is Brett Lloyd. Federovich just got Capuano a strike. Caught that ball very well on the inside corner. Lloyd was 0 for 3 in last night's game in an RBI on a fielder's choice. His average has slipped under 200, batting 199. Trying to slow things down a little bit at the plate right now. Since his return from the DL home run and two RBIs. That's a base hit. Stayed on that changeup. Looked like the changeup was up a bit. He stayed on it and went right back up the middle. That's the first Blue Jays hit of the night. Solid single to center field. Change up. Got to wait for it to stay up. That one does. Lori hits it right off the end of the bat into center field for the Jays' first base hit. A one out single. That'll turn the lineup over. Jose Reyes. Boy, Blue Jays got to get something going. They were hammered last night by the Dodgers 14 to 5. May have led to a 70 minute players only meeting prior to this game tonight. Boy, 70 minutes, that's a long meeting. I don't know if I ever thought of any teammates that could talk for 70 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Unless everybody talked five minutes, you know. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, usually they're 20 minutes. Yeah. No more than 30. This one, an hour and 10 minutes called by the ball club. What's Players? your thought about player meetings? I think it was imperative that something was done after last night's ball game. Blue Jays looked bad. They didn't pitch it. They didn't catch it. They didn't hit it. Dodgers rolled all over them. I think something had to be done. And it was good to see this is popped up back behind home plate out of play. Came into the clubhouse area this afternoon and the doors were shut off. What's up? Players meeting. Good. Got to regroup. Well, Blue Jays are eight games under 500. And coming out of spring training, thought was they were going to be a contending ball club. And right now, the only thing they can really think about is trying to get back to 500 at this point. There comes a point in the season where you say, ah, oh, we've got time or it's early. I don't think you can say that anymore. I think you have to start winning right now. It's way past early. Yeah. We've talked about this homestand for the Blue Jays starting the second half here against these teams. 
It's the 99th game of the season, just 63 games after this. And, of course, top of the division is getting jammed up. Red Sox, Rays, and Orioles all within two and a half games. And then you have the Yankees and the Blue Jays at the bottom looking up. Yeah, and when you're at home and you've got an extended home stand like the Blue Jays have, you have to win. Because California is right after this one. Ball is driven to left, and Crawford is not going to get it. Up against the wall, Lori is being waved around third, and he'll come in to score. The ball goes into third base, and Jose Reyes has put the Blue Jays on the board with an RBI double. Lightning at the top of the lineup for Toronto. Jose Reyes really starting to swing it now. The extra bases are starting to come. Look like a slider. Tried to backdoor breaking ball Reyes, and he smokes this ball over the head of Carl Crawford. And then Laurie at first base reads it. Going to score easily without a throw. So Laurie. With the one-out single comes in to score all the way from first. For Reyes, his 15th RBI of the season. Melky Cabrera hits it hard. Ellis was playing him up the middle. Throws out Cabrera. Reyes on the play moves to third. Two outs. The Blue Jays have taken a one-nothing lead after this half inning. John Gibbons, the manager, will join us from the dugout. As is the case every Tuesday night. So Bautista will bat with Reyes at third and two outs. Jose walked with two outs in the first inning. Chris Capuano pitching much better on the road than he has at home this season, which is kind of unusual given the dimensions of Dodger Stadium. Dodger Stadium's always been a terrific pitcher's ballpark, but this year he's fared much better on the road than he has at home. Great numbers on the road. Tough to knock the ball out of the ballpark at Dodger Stadium at night games. And he is a ground ball type of pitcher. Tough to get the ball in the air against him. Three and zero. Oh. Encarnacion will follow Bautista. Reyes with the RBI double moved to the third on the ground out. And I hope Jose comes out of his shoes right here swinging. Three and zero. Oh. You've got a guy out there. Reyes at third base just waiting to get knocked in. 3 and 0. He takes his strike. Bautista might be looking off speed pitch from Capuano. That's how you end up hitting with runners in scoring position. Have a plan. Bouncing ball up the middle, the plan comes through. Bautista drives home Reyes. It's two to nothing, Blue Jays, for Bautista, his 51st RBI of the season. Third hit of the inning. Back in familiar surroundings for Jose Bautista, a walk and a single now. Back in that number three spot in the batting order. Right back through the middle. Shorten it up a little bit and pick yourself up an RBI. Edwin Encarnacion. After Reyes came in to score, it's 2 nothing Jays. Edwin flied out to right his first time up. Goes after the first pitch, and it's a high pop-up. In the shallow right, Mark Ellis goes out, makes the play. The inning is over, but the Blue Jays score two runs on three hits. 
Reyes and Bautista with the RBIs. They've staked Todd Redmond to a 2 0 lead. And John, give us your impressions of Todd Redman so far tonight. What do you like about what you've seen so far? Yeah, Buck, I like the way he's throwing the ball. You know, he's, uh, you know, all year long he's filled in this role for us. And he's done a nice job. He really has. He's, uh, he's got a sneaky fastball. I mean, he scatters a little bit in that zone, but it's an, uh, uncomfortable at bat. It's got to be. You know, he's been really good against left-handers all year. And he's given us to this point just what we needed. You know, we're a little beat up down that bullpen. Of course, we scored two runs here in, in the bottom of that inning right there is big. So we need some more innings, good quality innings out of him, and then we need to take advantage and pound this guy a little bit. Give me your hitters look a little bit more comfortable against Capuano there in that last inning. What are they saying down there? Well, I mean, we, we have an idea what he's trying to do. The, the key is, you know, he, he loves his changeup. He, he goes to that changeup every time he's in trouble or a lot of times with two strikes. So we, all you got to do is make him elevate a little bit and think middle of the field. You know, I think he's... You know, this this style of lefties, you guys you guys all know that uh, you know if you pull off the ball, they're going to eat you alive. So you got to think middle of the field, and uh, that's how you get your good results. That worked for two runs in the third. John, thanks for your time. All right, guys. It's John Gibbons, the manager, with his thoughts, and we saw Brett Lorry wait for that changeup upstairs. He got a single, scored the first run of the game, and then Reyes hammered the ball off the wall in left center for an RBI double. Not coincidental. That two of the three hits that inning were back through the middle. Gibby was just telling us that's the approach that he wants to see from his hitters. Jose Bautista with a big two out single to center. Yasiel Puig, the right fielder with a full count. Puig struck out on a slider. His first time up. Redmond has three strikeouts so far. There's another slider. This one was up, and Puig can run. No contest. He has an infield hit. Now he's a big man with all the tools you want in a baseball player, and DeRosa knew he didn't have much of a chance. Yeah, you can't do much about that if you're playing third base. You got to play deep because you have to respect the power when he taps it. If you can run like this, look at this. Pick him up, lay him down. And we talked about it last night, 6'3", 240. Yeah. And he can run like that. And we mentioned last night, too, how he reminds us of Bo Jackson. Don Mattingly has got to be thrilled with the way Puig has played in his time with the Dodgers. Gonzalez goes after the first pitch, and kind of shown will go to second. What a play by Reyes. Boy, he stayed with it. He had that big Puig running hard toward him at second base. Encarnacion knocked it down, but still had the presence of mind to get the lead runner. Ideally, at first baseman, you want to create an angle, a throwing lane. But when he boots the ball, look at that. That throwing lane is non-existent. The runner is right in front of Reyes. Ball right off the heel, kicks it back behind him where he throws it. Not much of a window to throw, but what a job by Reyes to pick it keep that foot on the bag. You know he didn't see that ball out of Encarnacion's hand. He just stayed with it and made a nice play. Hanley Ramirez fouls it back. Gonzalez is at first on the fielder's choice. Ramirez caught looking at strike three. 
his first time up. Well, Blue Jays have to play better. No question about it. We mentioned five errors in last night's game. Ramirez chases that high pitch. When a batter is as hot as Hanley Ramirez, I think you have to go in or you got to go out of the strike zone because he's just seeing it and swinging it. Pretty good idea right there by Redmond to go up with that fastball. 0 oh, 2. Breaking ball fouled on. Todd Redmond was originally drafted by Kansas City in 2003. He didn't sign. He went on to play junior college baseball at St. Petersburg Junior College. He was a draft and follow pick of the Pirates in 2004, and he signed just a few days before the draft in 2005. On the ground, the Rosa falls to his feet. All he can do is go to first, and Ramirez beat that throw. It looked like he was going to be safe. Once DeRosa fell down, he knew his only shot was at first. It's an infield hit for Hanley Ramirez. Looked like initially it had a chance to be a double play ball. Yeah, and a good job by Adrian Gonzalez, the runner at first base, to hustle into second base so there wasn't the short throw from DeRosa to second. Normally, this play right here, you get the force out. When you have to leave your feet at third base, but he did a good job of hustling down there. You can see he's right at the bag already. No chance for De DeRosa to get him there. And Ramirez will beat that one out. Now a couple of infield hits, and the Dodgers have something cooking here in the fourth. Andre Ethier goes after the first pitch and fouls it into the seats. Blue Jays have a 2 0 lead. The Dodgers trying to answer that in their half of the fourth. Well, we heard about Matt Garza yesterday going to the Texas Rangers, and tonight the Orioles have pulled the trigger. No, they didn't. Did they really? They got some unusual help. K Rod, Francisco Rodriguez from the Brewers to add depth to their bullpen. Of course, we all know what the situation is with the Brewers now. with Braun suspended for the rest of the year. You can bet there's going to be a lot of people knocking on their door saying, anybody else you want to move? Yeah. Mike Gonzalez, a left-handed reliever. John Axford's another guy that's been talked about being on the move, and they move K-Rod to Baltimore. Aramis Ramirez, I heard his name today. Might be out there. You can hear Todd Redman holler front, front, front to help Aaron Seabee locate that ball in the dirt. Breaking ball in the dirt. Hit down, block it with any part of your body. Keep it in front of you. One and two. Redman would love to get a double play ball. Way outside. Another name that you hear coming out of the Cubs. Alfonso Soriano. Maybe he goes back to New York. The Yankees. To play third base? Or wouldn't that be something? How long has it been since he's been on the infield? Ever since he went to Chicago. Chicago, five, six years. Two balls, two strikes. This is driven toward the gap in left field, and that's going to get down past Cabrera, and it bounces out of play. For the moment, that saves the Blue Jays a run. Hanley Ramirez was at third base, anxious to score, but the ball bounced out of play. Ethier with another double. Puts the Dodgers on the board. Blue Jays catch a break here at home because Ramirez, the runner at first base, he was going to score if this ball hits off the wall and comes back into play. The ball up and away. And that nice swing by Ethier drives it to left field. Really no chance for the outfielders to catch this one. It bounces out of play. 
So Ramirez has to stop at third base, second and third, and just one out. Eighth year's third double in this series. Had a pair of doubles last night. Picks up an RBI. His 32nd run driven in. Mark Ellis struck out on a high fastball to end the second. 2 1 Blue Jays. Dodgers threatening runners at second and third, just one out. Ellis had a pair of hits and a sacrifice fly in last night's game. We saw Ellis in his ability to cover both sides of the plate in last night's game. He had a two strike base hit to right field his first time up and then got a fastball. He pulled it to left in the fifth. There's a base hit to right field. Ramirez is in the score. Bautista comes up throwing. It is cut off. And just like that, it's a tie game at 2 2. Hanley Ramirez. Comes in from third. Ellis picks up the RBI and extends his hit streak to five straight games. Professional at bat right there. Second and third and just one out. The middle of the infield is playing deep. Shoot that ball the other way. Just like Mark Ellis does. Bautista wasn't playing very deep in the outfield, so you can't score both runs. But that's a pretty good at bat right there by Mark Ellis. Complimentary players for this Dodger team just out of the reach of Brett Lorry. Jerry Hairston Jr. Big cut. Every team has to have superstars if you're going to win, right? And the Dodgers have plenty of those, but they've got very good complimentary players. We saw A.J. Ellis last night come up with a big game. Mark Ellis is a good complimentary player. Punto Hairston at the plate. Skip Schumacher with a three run home run last night. Big hit last night. You know what they all have in common? They're baseball players. They come from winning organizations. There you go. Skip Schumacher from the Cardinals. Jerry Hairston won a World Series ring with the Yankees. Mark Ellis from the A's. They understand how they fit into the big picture. Punto. You got to have winners. Adrian Gonzalez is one of those guys. He's the star. He's going to hit for you. He's going to hit around 300. Puig's a rookie just learning in the big leagues. And Kemp, Crawford. Those guys, Hanley Ramirez, they're your, your big superstars. Matt Camp not expected to play in this series. He sprained his ankle in his first day back off the disabled list and said he was feeling great at the plate. Knew he didn't need a rehab assignment, said, I've got it figured out. One and two. Hairston strikes out. Jerry Hairston can't put the ball in play with less than two outs and runners at the corners. Last time out, Todd Redman, career high in strikeouts. And he picks up a big one right there. Career high, six strikeouts. That's number four, and it's a big one with a runner at third base, less than two out. The catcher, Tim Fedorovich, had an infield hit off the pitcher's glove his last time up. Goes after that first pitch and fouls it back. Fedorovich is 25 years old. This is his third season in Dodgers organization. Last year he was the starting catcher in a Triple A All Star game. Oh, and two. The Dodgers have tied it up.
Two runs on four hits. 0 2 pitch driven into the seats on the right side. Yasiel Puig started it with an infield single to third. It was erased on a fielder's choice. Gonzalez reached and then another infield hit by Hanley Ramirez and the big blow in the inning, an opposite field RBI double by Andre Epio. How about the veterans talking to Puig there on the bench? By three call. Redmond with a couple of strikeouts with runners at the corners minimizes the damage, but the Dodgers have tied it at two all. When we come back, Adam Lynn will lead things off, followed by Mark DeRosa, the third baseman, and then Rajay Davis. 2 2 here at Raptors Center. Cambridge. Welcome to the ballpark. We hope you're having a great night. It is a gorgeous night for baseball. The Dodgers are in town. It's a 2 2 ball game as we are set for the bottom of the fourth inning. Two two. The Dodgers have five hits. Blue Jays have three hits. And the Dodgers. After racking up 16 hits in last night's game, took advantage of a couple of infield hits in the top half of this inning to tie it up at two all. Big comeback right there from Todd Redman. Buckle down, get a couple of strikeouts, leave that guy at third base. Adam Lynn will start things off for the Jays. It one down and away for a ball. Ball and a strike to the Blue Jays DH. Land is hit 288 against lefty pitching this year. He gets jammed with this pitch and flares it in left. Crawford makes an easy play of it. One down here in the bottom of the fourth. You could win a trip to Alcatraz. Looking specially marked cases of Sleeman. No purchase necessary. Legal drinking age required. Back here in Rogers Center. Another good crowd on hand this Tuesday night. Ball game with the Dodgers and session stands are busy. One out for Mark DeRosa. He had his mind made up on a different pitch than the one he got. 
And Capuano, who's a smart guy, crosses him up and throws him a slider. Capuano, Capuano went to Duke. And he was an economics major. Phi Beta Kappa, nonetheless. Not too shabby. They asked him, what was your toughest class? And he said, microeconomics. <laughs> Mine, oh. too. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't do so well in that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and two went out. He was his valedictorian of his high school class. Went on to Duke. So we all know who the smartest guy on the field is tonight. Mark DeRosa went to Penn. Pretty good school there, too. Of course, Penn, home of the Orton School of Business, and DeRosa was the quarterback at Penn. Got to be a smart guy to be a quarterback, right? Especially in the Ivy League. Wonder if they do crossword puzzles. <laughs> I don't know, but I know you blow them away <laughs> if they had a match between you, big guy. Oh, and two up and away for a ball. We mentioned the Blue Jays had a players only meeting prior to the game this evening. They had an awful game last night. It was bad in every aspect, and they felt a need to get together and talk things over. Mark DeRosa tried that early in the season, and tough for an extra man first, but especially an extra man in his first year. And the Blue Jays have a lot of guys that haven't been here for a long time. It's always very difficult to get everybody on the same page. But the one thing that they should have in common is a desire to win. And in those meetings, basically all they are is it's an open floor. For the players to stand up and get stuff off their chest if they have something that they have some complaints about the way things are or sometimes they'll get in there and they'll say hey we got to do this better we have to do that better we have to make a better effort whatever it is another ball driven to right and deep we got the wall home run to rosa he hit a ball hard to right his first time up and capuano Went away from him again. This time he knocks it out of the ballpark. His sixth home run has given the Blue Jays the lead once again. Yeah, and it all starts with a great approach. We talked about it his first time up, how he dives in towards the plate with a closed front toe to keep the front shoulder in. He knows what Capuano wants to do with him. He wants to keep that ball away. DeRosa should just keep that front shoulder in and drive that ball the other way for a home run. Puig thinks he can catch anything. Look at the effort as he puts a foot on the wall and gets his glove over the wall, but it's well beyond his reach. We saw one of the best catches last night by Puig in center field. I think he thinks if it stays in Rogers center, he can catch it. Yeah, he made that catch in the eighth inning off J.P. Aaron Sevilla. He couldn't catch DeRosa's homer. Blue Jays have a 3-2 lead. Rajay Davis struck out his first time up. Ball and a strike. There's trouble. That's a fair ball down the right side. It's up against the wall. Puig's got a good arm, but Davis gets to second standing up. For Rajay, his eighth devil comes with one out. Last inning, the Blue Jays started figuring out. Capuano hit a couple of balls up the middle. This inning, they're going the other way. That's what John Gibbons was saying. He says he knows he wants to go to that breaking ball, that changeup, so he got to think the other way or up the middle, and Rajay Davis does just that. Right down the line. That looks like a changeup. You see it fading away from Davis. He does a good job of barehanding that ball and getting it in there. That would have been three. Davis leads the Blue Jays in batting average against lefty pitching, and he is one for two tonight against Capuano. How about those tweak marks right there, right above Puig? That's where he jumped to try and get that home run ball from Mark DeRosa. Yeah, you talk to his Dodger teammates, and they all rave about what they have seen from Puig so far early in his big league career. J.P. Aaron Sebia with Davis at second, always a threat to run.
Off the glove of Capuano. Mark Gellis doesn't have a play. Davis goes to third. Should be an infield hit for Aaron Sebia. Three hits in a row. A home run, a double, now an infield single. Sometimes pitchers get a little bit ahead of themselves. This ball right back through the middle. Looked like he was trying to catch and then check the runner all at once. But first thing you have to do, you got to make sure you catch the ball. Yeah. Mark Gellis made a wise decision not to make a throw with Davis running from second to third. One out. Brett Laurie had a single to center his last time up. Came around to score on the Reyes double. 3 2 Blue Jays. Laurie showing bunt and pulled the bat back. What's that? <laughs> That's exactly what he said. What's Brett doing up there? We don't want him to bunt here. We want him to hit a double. One out. Two and oh. He's got a great chance right here. Zero in. These are the situations where you say, and you want to be greedy. I'm thinking two RBIs. Yeah. I'm not thinking about one right here. They went in the gap. There's a drive to center. Ethier came in and retreats, makes the catch. Davis tags. He'll score from third on the sack fly by Brett Lord. It's a two run inning, and the Jays have a 4 2 lead. That ball hard just couldn't get it over Ethier's head, but he was thinking about extra bases. Ethier broke in momentarily, then runs that one down in center field. Laurie picks up the RBI, his 17th of the season on the sack fly. Jose Reyes. Reyes batting for the third time. A bit more of a feel for Capuano's pitches tonight. He doubled hard to the alley in left field his last time up. He's a little bit more aggressive right handed, isn't he? Yeah. A little bit more pop. Yeah, it seems as though he's got more confidence. A natural right handed hitter that learned how to switch hit. Four home runs from the right side. He's got a most of them. Just off the inside corner. Hit hard, but Nick Punto is there. The inning is over, but the Blue Jays have taken a 4 2 lead. Mark DeRosa started it off. A one out home run to right, his sixth of the season. Gave the Blue Jays a one run lead. Brett Laurie added the second. Blue Jays have a 4 2 lead after four. Now it's time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio.
Well, the Blue Jays have a 4 2 lead, and they have spread the wealth. Reyes, Bautista, DeRosa, and Laurie all with RBIs. Tyler Edmund misses with the first pitch. Nick Punto, the shortstop. Last well, big inning to answer the Dodgers two runs in the top half of the inning. Come right back and score two of your own. And now Redmond's got to shut down the Dodgers right here. Seven batters last inning after they gave him the lead. Go right after him. That'll do it. Good fastball catches the outside corner. It's one and two. And he did a really fine job. First and third and just one out. Ended up striking out Hairston and Fedorovich to finish off that inning. Todd Redman wasn't with the Blue Jays in spring training. He was claimed off waivers from Baltimore on March 22nd. Had a bad shoulder. And he spent seven weeks, first part of the season, on the DL before he joined Buffalo. Comes right at Nick Punto and strikes him out. That's three straight strikeouts, and that's six for Redmond. The all-new, completely re-engineered 2014 Acura MDX. The luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Back to the top of the order. Carl Crawford watches one sail up and away. Crawford will turn 32 years old on August 5th. Hard to believe he's yeah. 32. He's in his 12th major league season. He's always been a speed merchant. He is the active leader in triples. He has 116 triples. Jose Reyes has 111. He is right behind him. If you're thinking about the triples record, Forget about it. It's 309 triples. 309 triples. <laughs> Turn of the century, the Hall of Famer Sam Crawford, who played with the Cincinnati Reds and the Detroit Times, had 309 triples. And Crawford, you said, had 118? 16. 116. He's the active leader. I, I don't think he's going to do it. No, probably not, huh? He's up there also in stolen bases. Yeah, he sure is. He's just one of those guys that has a great combination of speed and power. He didn't fare well in Boston. Was injured there. Hits this ball on the ground. Brett Lorry throws him out. Two down. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. It's amazing Dustin Pedroia could run that fast. His wallet is so big today after signing that lucrative contract. Pedroia of the Red Sox. Puig gets hit by that pitch. He'll take his base inside fastball, and Puig is hit with two outs. But Pedroia signed a seven year extension with the Red Sox for $100 million. Is that fair value for Dustin Pedroia? You know what? He earned every nickel of it. The way the guy plays, he's worth it. I don't think you can put a dollars and cents sign on what he brings, you know, for that team. I agree with you 100%. Pound for pound, he might be the best player in baseball. 5'8". And he's been a rookie of the year, MVP, World Series champion. What more do you want? Just before the All Star break, Blue Jays were playing at home, and John Paul Morosi was taking an informal, he's a writer for Fox Sports, he took an informal survey of who the most valuable player was in the American League the first half. And you know who came out on top? Dustin Pedroia. From a lot of the writers and players. 
for what he has brought to the Red Sox. Yeah, and you know what? You talk about team meetings and leadership. Pedroia leads by example, and he'll get in your face. He might have to step on the top step of the dugout, but he'll get in your face. If you're not playing the way he thinks you should be, he'll let you know. There goes Puig. He got a big jump. Aaron Sevier from his knees, not in time. Sixth stolen base of the season for Yasiel Puig. He's been caught three times. Got a big jump that time. Todd Redmond's got the high leg kick. He's got one foot on the carpet. He's got outstanding speed. Really no chance for Aaron Sebier. He does a good job to get rid of that ball to Reyes. But Puig goes thundering in the second base with the storm bag. Reyes had to hesitate to take the ball. It was in the dirt by the time he put the tag on. Puig. It was late. Two outs. Three and oh count to Gonzalez. Adrian Gonzalez, a 307 career hitter against the Blue Jays with a chance to drive in a run with two outs. He'll take ball four. So Redmond creating his own problems here in the fifth. With two outs, he hit Week. Week then stole second. Now he's walking Gonzalez, and that's going to get a visit from the pitching coach, Pete Walker. Baseball is all about momentum, and you can say that about any sport, but you've retaken the lead in the bottom of the fourth, and now you've given the momentum back to the Dodgers and encourage them they can get right back in this ball game. Another thing about baseball is you've got guys out there to pick you up. Make a pitch right here. Your defense will pick you up. You said it best. He's created his own problem by hitting them and then walking. The next batter hitting Puig, walking. Gonzalez, make a pitch. Now you've got the red hot Hanley Ramirez. He had an infield single in the fourth. Came around to score. Little tapper back to the mound. Redmond looks like he's going to get out of it, and he does. The underhand toss ends the inning. The Dodgers strand a pair. Blue Jays have a 4 2 lead when we come back. It'll be the number two hitter, Melky Cabrera. Then Jose Bautista, he's got an RBI already. The cleanup man, Edwin Encarnacion, to follow. Play Sunday, July 28th, and the Blue Jays take on the Houston Astros. The game starts at 1:07 p.m. The first 20,000 fans will receive a Mr. Sub Cooler Bag giveaway. Call the Blue Jays for tickets at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com and stop by most Rogers Plus locations for Mr. Sub Cooler Bag Day. Now that looks like a setup right there. 
Pat Tabber jerseys all over the place. A whole bunch of kids in the clubhouse. And what's up with that? <laughs> That's my room. <laughs> it's romper room this week <laughs> in Toronto. Boy, a lot of boys there having a good time. And I know they always enjoy that trip up oh, to Toronto. We love it. We'll be down on the field after the game today playing baseball. It's a night game. A doubleheader for the Tabler clan. Melky Cabrera takes the first pitch strike. Got a little update from AAA Buffalo. It is raining. The tarp is down. And Jay Happ is finished in his rehab start. He went four innings. Allowed three hits. He walked two. Struck out three. Threw 60 pitches. And... His goal was 70 to 75 pitches, and the rain knocked him out of that rehab start, but it sounded like it went pretty well. That is a good sign right there. Blue Jay still non committal when it comes to Jay Happ. All John Given says is going to take him a couple of more rehab starts to get back up here. Well, the one thing I learned when I was managing was don't make a decision till you have to. You don't need to lay out any plans and let anybody know what you're thinking. You never know what will happen in regard to the active roster, but Jay Happ would be a welcome addition to this pitching staff. Pitching so well before he got hit in the head. And the funny thing about that, it's not his head that's the problem right now, the concussion or the fractured skull, it's the knee. Now it's a matter of just getting his arm up to major league standards. Cabrera takes one inside. It's a ball and two strikes. Blue Jays have a 4-2 lead as they bat in the bottom of the fifth. There's a drive to left. Carl Crawford played it perfectly. That's the first down of the inning. Fans, you can see Canada's top athletes like you've never seen them before in Sportsnet Magazine as it presents the beauty of sport. Visit sportsnet.ca slash beauty of sport and check out the Sportsnet Magazine and the newsstands now. Did we make it? No. <laughs> I don't think we would be called the beauty of sport if we did. Well, they said hottest <laughs> athletes. But I thought it said hottest former athletes. <laughs> old timers. We'll make the old timers edition. <laughs> Jose Bautista's had a perfect night. He's walked and singled. Home run cut. He fouls it back. Right now, Jose is just a little bit too long in his swing. Just take him a, a little bit longer to get the barrel, the bat out in front. He's at his best when that swing is a little shorter. He can wait back a little bit longer on that back leg. High and deep to left field. Crawford back. Looking up. Goodbye, home run. That's a little shorter. Number 23. For Bautista. Back in the third spot in the lineup. Yeah, and doing some damage. How about him laying back that time on his back leg? That's when he's at his best. Breaking ball. And he hammers it to left field. Watch this. Do the leg kick, watch him stay back before he recognizes breaking ball, and then the swing will bring him forward. That is short and see ya. So Bautista has extended the Blue Jays lead. It's 5 2. Chris Capuano leaves. It's Carlos Marmo just added to the roster. He comes into the ball game. One out here in the fifth. Edwin Encarnacion waits on Marble. Blue Jays with a 5-2 lead.
B.I. single and a solo home run of Chris Capuano knocks Capuano out of the ball game. The eighth home run Capuano has allowed this season. It's 5-2 Jays and Carlos Marble, who has just been added to this roster, was acquired from the Cubs in the first week of July, makes his first appearance with the Dodgers. That was for Matt Career. Marble always had the big arm, but lacks consistency. 21 walks, 32 strikeouts. He's had some big strikeout seasons with the Chicago Cubs. His career high, 65 strikeouts in 74 innings in 2009. He's had two 40 save opportunity seasons. He was the closer for the Cubs for a while. And he is greeted by a single off the bat of Edwin Encarnacion. <laughs> Edwin a, got a fastball. Smoked it in the left field. Blue Jays now have eight hits. Bautista has two of those eight hits, including his 23rd home run. Adam Lynn's gone 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Quick throw to first and in Canacion had to dive back in. Mentioned Marmo was acquired in that trade from the Cubs that took place on July 2nd. He was then sent to the minor leagues. Then pops this one up. It's playable in foul territory. Gonzalez, the first baseman, makes the catch. That's the second out of the inning. But Marmol made that trade and then was sent to the minor leagues. He made his first three appearances in a ball. Rancho Cucamonga in Southern California before being promoted to Chattanooga. Ted Lilly and Chris Capuano having a discussion on the bench. Blue Jays scored five runs on eight hits against Capuano. Something very interesting about that trade, horrible to the Dodgers. They traded slot money too, didn't they? Yeah. International signing bonus slot number 92. And it's first year that we have heard anything about that. First year it's been possible. But the slot signing bonuses, which become eligible on July 2nd, right when the trade was made. And it was valued at $209,700. So that gives the Dodgers a little more flexibility in international signing inside to DeRosa. With the Cubs. You'd never know it by that pitch. Now, Marmo, like I said, it's always been the guy you see, DeRosa, <laughs> not happy with it. He can smile about it now that didn't hit him, but he's always been a guy who's been a little wild because he wraps that arm and it really messes up his timing of his pitches. He wraps the ball behind his body just a little bit. The lower half goes and the arm doesn't catch up, and that's why he's wild. DeRosa homered his last time up back in the fourth. Solo shot his 26th RBI. It's interesting in that DeRosa is second on the team to Edwin Encarnacion in at bats per RBI this season. Encarnacion leads the Blue Jays. 
with a 4.9 shoot average at bat per RBI. DeRosa is right behind him at 5.12. Second on the team ahead of Bautista, Rasmus, and Eric Sebier. And here he'll take the two out walk. Well, the Blue Jays really need to take advantage and have a big bounce back win after getting pummeled at the hands of the Dodgers last night. Rajay Davis had a double and scored in the fourth. Don't want to be satisfied now. You got to start pouring it on. You got a couple of guys on. A couple of outs. Take advantage of this wild streak. Chuck Krim, who is the bullpen coach for the Dodgers, is out to talk to Marmol. Rick Honeycutt is the pitching coach, and Honeycutt was here yesterday. I'm not aware that he has left the ball club. He might be under the weather, but we're not sure why Krim is the acting pitching coach tonight. Krim is in his first year as the bullpen coach. He pitched in the big leagues with the Brewers, the Angels, and the Cubs, so... Obviously, he's filling in for Rick Honeycutt tonight. Two outs, two on. A run in on Jose Bautista's solo home run. Off the end of the bat. Punto quickly to second in time to get DeRosa. The inning is over. Blue Jays have a 5-2 lead. Fans, here comes the home hardware cleanup crew. Brought to you by Natura. Home hardware's exclusive line of safe, environmentally friendly cleaning products. Thank you, Jamie. Alexio Gando starting for the Texas Rangers. And, of course, they have reinforcements as Matt Garza will start tomorrow in that game against New York. But everybody trying to line things up as the trade deadline nears a week from tomorrow. Yep, next Wednesday, July 31st. Clubs can make trades without acquiring waivers and... Give a lot of freedom to make those moves. It'll be interesting to see how everything sorts out around baseball. Lots of teams are in position to make a run for postseason. I like Texas's chances now with their pitching staff. They are three games back at the start of play of Oakland. Texas has won just three of their last ten. 
Oakland and Texas by the Angels. They just can't get any sort of consistency. They have won just four of their last ten games. They've lost two straight. Andre Eth here hops this one along the left side out of play. Other teams that you think might be in the market to make some trades. Pittsburgh, boy, they had some bad news last yeah. night. Jason Grilly walked off the mound with a forearm problem, and he has since been placed on a disabled list. So that's bad news for Pittsburgh. Do you think that's why Baltimore went out and got K Rod? Just for insurance? So Pittsburgh doesn't get him. You know? Doesn't really have an impact on Baltimore, but Pittsburgh does. Pittsburgh a game and a half behind the Cardinals in the NL Central. This has popped up. Playable. DeRosa into foul ground. Makes the catch. Eight years retired. Brett Cecil starts to loosen up. Cecil pitched in the game last night. Cecil worked an inning, was charged with one run. It was unearned. He threw just 15 pitches, so John Gibbons feels like he can use Cecil in this ballgame. So Ethier is the first out of the top half of the six. Mark Ellis quickly in the hole, 0 and 2. We mentioned Todd Redman last one on the 7th of July right here at Rogers Center when he beat the Twins 11 games ago. That was the last win by a Blue Jays starter. Here's another pop up. Laurie, the second baseman, waits on it. Two down. We have talked a lot this year about your starters having to carry your team and getting wins 11 games ago. That's the last time a starter for the Blue Jays won a game. You've got to have consistent starting pitching. There's no question about that. And It'll be Esmil Rogers tomorrow in the series finale going up against Ricky Nolasco, who was acquired by the Dodgers from the Miami Marlins. Rogers is three and four this season. It all starts tomorrow at six. Connected will be on, and then the pregame show at 6:30. Hairston hits it high and deep to left. Melky Cabrera. Watches it sail into the seats. Jerry Hairston Jr. For this second home run of the season, it comes with two outs here in the sixth. Showing some pop right there. Hairston popped up and then struck out with a runner at third base and less than two outs. So a little redemption right there against Todd Redman. Looked like a Fastball that is elevated and he's able to get on top of it. A couple of pop ups this inning. Redmond goes back to that high fastball, but Harrison a little bit better there. Terry Harrison Jr., his second home run of the season. He got to start at third base tonight. His third career home run hit here at Rogers Center. His fifth career home run against the Blue Jays. The catcher, Tim Fedorovich, has singled and struck out. It is 5 3 Blue Jays. Boy, they need a win. They've got to snap a five game losing streak. They haven't won a game in the Second and a half of the season. Fedorovich drives this hard. Melky Cabrera trying to cut it off, but he can't. Goes all the way to the wall. Fedorovich is headed to second base with his fifth double of the season. A two out double here in the sixth.
And John Gibbons keeping his eye on that bullpen. He's got Brett Cecil ready, and there's the call. So Todd Redman will leave this ball game after Tim Fedorovich picks up his second hit of the night. It's a double that splits the gap in left center up against the wall. Jerry Hairston, a two-out home run. Fedorovich, the double, and Redman turns the ball over to the bullpen. It'll be Brett Cecil when we come back to face Nick Punto with two outs. Second base with two outs here in the top half of the sixth inning. And the Blue Jays have gotten to their bullpen. Remember in last night's game, Josh Johnson pitched into the third inning and six relievers had to pitch in that game. And you see this bullpen has been stretched to the max this year. They've used 19 different relief pitchers. That's the most in the American League. They've appeared in almost 300 games, the third highest total. And they have pitched the most innings per game, almost four, three and two thirds. That's the first in the American League, so they have been used a lot. Todd Redmond threw 103 pitches over five and two thirds. They now turn it over the bullpen. Brett Cecil pitched in last night's game, inning, a couple of hits in a strikeout, but good numbers all the way around. Nick Punto, a switch hitter, turns around about right handed against Brett Cecil. Pat mentioned Cecil pitching the game last night. He threw just 15 pitches, faced five batters. And he has had on the team, Brett Cecil, the most inherited runners when he's come into the ballgame. He has come into some big situations this year. And gotten the Blue Jays out of his stranded. 16 0. They have not scored. That's a good pitch. He gets back into the count at 2 and 1. Well, all he has to do now is throw one up and in on the strike zone. He's got all four corners of the strike zone, strike zone covered. Look at that on pitch tracks. Petrovich at second. Punto reaches for that outside pitch. It's two balls and two strikes. Jerry Hairston Jr. homered with two outs, and then Petrovich followed that up with a double. The curveball has been bread and butter this year for Brett Cecil with two strikes. Didn't like it at all. Mike Evans brings him up. Cecil comes on and strands the base runner at second. Punto strikes out for a second time. Cecil goes down and away and gets the call from Mike Evans. Blue Jays hold on to the 5 3 lead.
selection from the CONCACAF Gold Cup. It's the U.S. and Honduras at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's 4 p.m. Pacific. Then Mexico and Panama will hook up. 10 p.m. Eastern starts 7 p.m. Pacific. The semifinals of the CONCACAF Gold Cup on Sportsnet World. Another good crowd on hand here at Rogers Center. 34,000 last night. 32,158 on hand tonight. The Dodgers have a good following no matter where they go. And last night, with Hun Jin Ryu pitching, there was quite a contingent of Korean fans in attendance. And how about after the game last night when we were sticking around? Yeah, that was pretty cool. Ryu came back into the dugout after the game. And the fans got wind of it, and they came down to the Dodger dugout. It must have been 500 to 600 people around the dugout. Just to get a glimpse of them, maybe a picture, maybe get an autograph. It's pretty cool. J.P. Aaron Sebian is one for two, facing Marmol for the first time. He is behind 0 2. Carlos Marmol, we had mentioned that he was acquired by the Dodgers in that. Early July trade. Well, he overthrew that pitch. Hard slider way outside. When he's on, he is tough to hit. When he's throwing the ball in the strike zone, he can get wild just like that. Reach back for a little something extra. Almost throw it to the backstop. Ball is driven into center. Ethier on the run at the wall. Off his glove. Aaron Sebia is headed toward third. He'll stop as Preeg came over to back up the play, and Preeg's got a heck of an arm. Aaron Sebia drove that to the wall in center. Ethier may have got a glove on it, but it's a double for Aaron Sebia. Well, that ball kept carrying for JP. Stays this good two strike approach to hammer that ball to center field. Ethier goes straight back. Thinks he has a beat on it. Times his jump after he looks where the wall is. If he looks up, maybe he catches it. That was interesting. He took his eye off the baseball and focused on the wall. Aaron Seabee with the double is 14th. But Glory shows bunt, pulls the bat back. Glory's had a perfect night at the plate. He singled and scored in the third at a sack fly in the fourth. Well, I like what the Blue Jays have done tonight. They have answered the Dodgers a couple of times. Once in the fourth, the fifth, now here in the sixth, trying to answer the Dodgers once again. Ball on a strike to Lori. Ball in the dirt gets away from Fedorovich. Aaron Sebia moves up. Good job by Aaron Sebia picking up on that ball, getting away from the catcher. It's a wild pitch charge to Marmo. Aaron Sebia moves over to third with nobody out. Another ball in the dirt. Gets under the glove of Fedorovich. JP, he's a catcher. He knows how tough it is to find the ball. And make a play. Moves up. Now the infield has to come in. Laurie singles to left field. Aaron Seavey will jog home. Brett Laurie's second hit and second RBI of the night. He's had a perfect night. As a hitter, you just feel so confident at the plate with a runner at third base and the infield in. You don't have to hit the ball hard. You just got to get into the outfield somehow. That's what Lori does. Times that one up. It's a seed. The left field. Blue Jays answer. That's four straight innings now that they've scored. Jose Reyes. Reyes batting left-handed for the first time tonight. Was one for three against the starter, Chris Capuano. Hit runners on. This ball is drilled and gone. Home run 
Reyes, a two-run line drive home run. Second extra base hit of the night for Jose Reyes. He drove in Brett Lorre earlier with the double. This time he's going to drive him in and himself with a line drive to right field. Carmel. Little breaking ball over the middle of the plate. And you're right, the hit and run was on. And as a hitter, you concentrate on that ball just a little bit more. And he slams it over the wall for the home run. Reyes' his fifth home run, the third Blue Jay home run of the night. Chuck Krim out to talk to Marmol. We have been informed that Rick Honeycutt, the pitching coach for the Dodgers, is away tending to personal matter. So Krim has come out of the bullpen to serve as a pitching coach. Words of encouragement for Marvel making his first appearance for the Dodgers. Just called up. Jose Dominguez, the young right-hander, pitched in the game last night and injured himself chasing down a pop foul in the sixth inning. The ball was caught by the catcher, A.J. Ellis, but Dominguez hurt his quad. There's a hot shot glove by Gonzalez. He bobbled the ball, but still made his way to the bag in time to beat Melky Cabrera. Well, the Blue Jays are hitting the ball hard. Former Blue Jay Brandon Lee has started to loosen up. Baseball is a beautiful ball game. You never know what you're going to get from night to night. Dodgers pounded on the Blue Jays 14 to 5 last night. Bautista with a big cut pops it up. Hairston in foul ground makes the catch. Two outs. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Well, that's great news for Mariznick. He is starting in center field in Colorado against the Rockies and Julius Jassim. That Rockies team playing the Marlins and Jose Fernandez is on the mound. Talk about a whole bunch of young talent on that team. Edwin Encarnacion. With a 1 1 count, they've restocked <laughs> the Miami Marlins, haven't they? Jake Turner from Detroit in the trade, a young pitcher. Fernandez, who you just talked about. Mike Stanton's, what, 23? Yeah, Mike Stanton's just a baby. Of course, they have a Danny Echeverria, the shortstop. He's hitting leadoff tonight. His average is up to 252. Like him. They got that Osuna kid in the outfield who's going to look like a pretty good player. Christian Yelich, another young outfielder. They're loading up again. Two and two, two outs. Bounced up the middle. Ellis on the shortstop side of second. Goes out in Conacion. The inning is over. But the Blue Jays add three more runs. They score three runs on three hits and a two-run home run by Jose Reyes. His fifth of the season. It's 8-3 Blue Jays.
you by Bacardi Oakart, Smooth Spice Drum, Bacardi. Proud partners of the Toronto Blue Jays. Tonight we're going to do this in two parts. Part one, the smooth move. Jose Bautista goes large. Home run to left field. Part two, how about what the fan does? After he catches the home run, give it to the youngster in the row behind him. What a smooth move. That's awesome. He's created a new Blue Jays fan. In a Bautista home run. Presented to that youngster out in left field. Carl Crawford goes after the first pitch. Rajay Davis has moved from center to left. Taking over defensively for Melky Cabrera. Colby Rasmus comes off the bench to play center field. He will go into the second spot. So now after that fan gave away the baseball. Saying I hear you caught a baseball. Where is it? <laughs> oh I gave it to that little kid back. <laughs> yeah. Well that's a good deal. So Crawford flies out to left. Yes, El Puig was hit by a pitch his last time up. He singled in the fourth inning. He is one for two. and a stolen base as well. Breaking ball. Tough play for DeRosa. Barry and not in time. Mark DeRosa, very aware of Puig's speed, took a shot, made the barehanded grab, but it wasn't in time to get to Puig. He can really run. That would have been a sensational play by DeRosa. His only chance with the barehand, not playing that deep, if the throw was a little bit closer towards the runner. You could see how Encarnacion had to stretch towards second. He couldn't stretch towards the throw. He would have got it a hair earlier and would have got him. Quig should hit 300 with his wheels. He can really motor. First pitch strike to Adrian Gonzalez. Quig has two hits tonight. They've both been ground balls to third. There are certain guys in baseball, like you said, should hit 300 just with their legs. Power and speed. That's what this game's all about. And he's got both of them. Boy, he does, and he's got a strong arm. You always hear about five tools, and the five tools are power, speed, batting average, and the ability to throw, and he can do everything. And he is just learning, literally, on the fly. So we mentioned, in case you really aren't up to speed on Yasiel Puig, he defected from Cuba. In 2012, the Dodgers signed him to a seven year contract. He was suspended from playing in Cuba because of repeated attempts to defect. There's a base hit for Adrian Gonzalez. Davis gets over quickly to cut it off. But Puig was restricted and unable to play baseball in Cuba for over a year. And then when he finally defected to Mexico, he was rusty. He had a tryout in Mexico. A lot of major league teams came down to see him, and a lot of people weren't impressed. Not the Dodgers. <laughs> All you have to do is watch the guy take batting practice and see how quick his bat is and how fast he is. Great arm. But he knew it was going to be a big ticket. Seven years over $42 million. Hanley Ramirez, he has an infield single in three at bats, and that ball goes right past Aaron Seedy. There goes the opportunity for a ground ball double play. It's a wild pitch charge to Brett Cecil. Curve ball, breaking ball in the dirt, and he just picks the glove up too quick. You're not trying to catch that ball. You're trying to block it. You're just trying to just knock it down. Just get a piece of it with your body. And here come the Dodgers right back. One out. Another good curveball. This one cut on and missed by Ramirez. 
He talked to the Dodgers and asked them what changed about three weeks ago. They were in last place on the 21st of June. They're now in first place in to a man. They didn't hesitate to say Hanley Ramirez. Ramirez was activated off the DL on June 4th. He has played great in the field and has delivered with the bat. Best batting average in Major League Baseball, almost 400. Most runs scored, highest slugging percentage, best on base percentage, all in baseball. And they also talk about how that has lengthened out their lineup for Don Madden. Made it a little bit tougher to make your way through. Trey Hillman is the bench coach for Don Mattingly, former manager of the Kansas City Royals. He is discussing the situation with the skipper. Hillman came through the Yankee system as a longtime minor league manager. They went to, went to Japan to manage before he's got his opportunity in Kansas City. Another breaking ball, wild swing from Ramirez. Yeah, you're hitting like that. You're not getting a fastball three and one. Not when you're hitting almost 400. Dustin McGowan is close to being ready. Another left-handed bat on deck in Andre Ethier. Full count, one out. Runners at second and third. Bounced and blocked by Aaron Sebia. Ramirez will walk. That'll load the bases. This Dodger ball club isn't done yet. Bases loaded, one out. The all-new, completely re-engineered 2014 Acura MDX. The luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Beautiful night at Rogers Center. Good crowd on hand. Over 32,000 in attendance. The Dodgers trying to rally in the seventh. They trail by five. Andre Ethier has an RBI double tonight. Was after the first pitch in thousand back. Three twenty six four grand slams in his career with the bases loaded. Hasn't gotten a hit this year though. With the bases loaded. Eight years hit just two thirteen with runners in scoring position. It's a little bit of a surprise given his ability to cover the plate. Uses the whole field. He'll take his walks when he needs to. Doesn't strike out a lot. 331 at bats, and he struck out 59 times. So he puts the ball in play. Mark Gallus to follow easier if he can keep the inning going. Blue Jays would love the opportunity to turn to leave Ellis standing on deck. Puig at third, Gonzalez at second, Ramirez at first. Ball in tight on eighth year, three and one. The Jays have scored in the last four innings. Trying to keep the Dodgers off the board here in the seventh. That'll walk in around. Cecil walks Ethier, forces in Puig. Back to back walks issued by Cecil, and that's going to end his night. John Gibbons has already made the call. Puig comes in to score the fourth Dodger run. 
Dustin McGowan will come into the ball game. The bases remain loaded. There's still just one out. And Dustin McGowan will inherit a tough situation. Mark Ellis is the scheduled batter. Ellis has extended his hit streak to five straight with an RBI single. When we come back, Dodgers are the front thing in their half of the seventh. Bullpen, and you look at what they've done. Best record for the Dodgers since June 22nd. They're 25 and 5, and the Blue Jays know all about hot teams. They just dealt with the Tampa Bay Rays. They're right there, 21 and 5. Same record as the Dodgers. And then, if you think the West Coast is going to get any easier, the Blue Jays are going to play the Mariners and the Athletic on their next road trip. That's what's interesting about that right there. The Blue Jays come out of the shoot playing the Rays and the Dodgers, the two hottest teams in the last month. Of the season that the Mariners and the Athletics and the Angels, so they need wins whenever they can get them. And tonight they've got a four run lead. Brett Cecil walked the final two batters that he faced, and now he'll turn it over to Dustin McGowan in 13 games. He doesn't have a record, but an ERA under two. Good fastball. You see the high strikeout total in nine innings. That's what the Blue Jays need right now some strikeouts. So McGowan, he too worked in the game last night. Bases loaded, Mark Ellis at the plate. McGowan jumps ahead with a good fastball. McGowan threw 26 pitches in an inning plus three batters last night. The Blue Jays had to use six relievers after Josh Johnson couldn't get anybody out in the third. Pretty good pitch. McGowan didn't get the call. Come back two seam fastball. Yeah, it looked like it might have hit the outside corner. Infield at double play depth, looking for that ground ball. That's why you'll see those two seamers from McGowan. There's a base hit to left field. Gonzalez is coming in right behind him is Hanley Ramirez. The ball is cut off and the Dodgers are right back in it. Mark Ellis with his second and third RBI of the night. Got that pitch up in the zone and hammered it to left. He now has hit five times this year with the bases loaded and has collected four hits and ten RBIs. Fastball one more time. Hooks it down the left field line. Good job by Rajay to get over there to cut that ball off and to save extra bases with the backhand just moved over from center field this inning. Third baseman Jerry Hairston Jr. homered his last time up. That ball hits it. And that'll reload the bases. Well, the wheels have come off for the Blue Jays here. Dodgers the base is loaded once again Pete Walker is going to come out and try to calm things down Pat Henkin the bullpen coach starting to move around again it looks like the veteran Darren Oliver is going to start to throw the catcher Tim Fedorovich has a single and a double tonight 
And all of a sudden, the Dodgers have 10 hits. Just like that. Tom Madden is trying to figure out his moves. It's still too early, I think, to go to your bench to go to a pinch, pinch hitter right here. Bases are loaded. Eighth year at third. Ellis at second. Hairston at first. And Fedorovich goes after the first pitch. 96 with some movement on it, too. Again, looking for that crown ball. One out. Three runs in this inning. Fedorovich is the eighth Dodger to bat. Strike two. Dustin McGowan has got more intense opportunities. Of late, he's thrown the ball well. Slider well outside. Will Little, the first base umpire, said no swing. Aaron Sevier blocked the breaking ball in the dirt. It's two and two. Going for that slider one more time. Yanks it to his glove side. That time, JP, good job blocking that one. Let's see. Tough call for the umpire. Looked like he checked in time. Two balls and two strikes. Bases loaded, one out. Sinking fastball. Federovic strikes out for a second time tonight. McGowan went back to his strength. That's his fastball. You know, right after. Come this with a couple of sliders. Watch the movement on that. That is nasty right there. Nick Punto is 0 for 3 with a pair of strikeouts. Goes after the first pitch. Punto spent a lot of time with the Twins, so he has faced McGowan in the past. Just 0 for 2. McGowan knocks it down. He's going to the plate, and Aaron Sebia holds on. Ethier argues that he beat the throw. Good play by McGowan. Aaron Sebia held his ground, stepped on hold, and stretched like a first baseman to take the throw. The inning is over. McGowan got a glove on that hot shot back to the mound, and Aaron Sebia. Wisely stayed right at home to take the toss. Ethier with the hard slide. Aaron Sebia pins the ball up against his chest protector and holds on. The Dodgers make it a ball game. It's six-two Blue Jays.
looked in the game last night. Former Tampa Bay Ray Powell threw two innings. He was charged with a run on two hits through 29 pitches, and he's on to start the bottom of the seventh and faces Adam Lynn. Also a former Royal, number one pick, 2004, made the big leagues in 2005. Second fastest Royal to make it to the big leagues, fastest, Bo Jackson. He delivers a first pitch strike to Lynn. J.P. Howell came up in 2005 as a starter. Made 15 starts for the Royals that season, but boy, he's found a home working out of the bullpen. Howell had shoulder problems pitching for the Rays. Eventually, had to come to shoulder surgery, and it's taken about a year and a half to really get back to 100 percent. That's some good years. What is with the Tampa Bay Rays? Close some games for him. Breaking ball is fouled out of play. Now he was a important part of their bullpen for a long time, and he credits that training staff with keeping him on the active roster. He said he pitched with a bad shoulder for a couple of years before he had surgery, just because Ron Porterfield, the trainer trainer for the race, did such a good job on his exercises and conditioning. One and two. Took a shot at that outside corner. How many hours a day would he spend training to get that shoulder back? After his surgery, he said it took him eight hours a day of rehab just to build his strength back up in the shoulder. Full count. Mark DeRosa is on deck. He's homered and walked. He is officially one for two. His home run number six of the season. Blue Jays have hit three home runs tonight. But the Dodgers have made it a two-run game. Bounce to short. Punto on the run. Throws Lind out. One out. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Bruce Chen starting for Kansas City. Giving up three hits in five innings. And J.P. Howe gets his man. He had one man to get. Adam Lind. He retires Lind. And will turn things over to the former Blue Jay. Brandon Lee. One out here in the bottom of the seventh when we come back. Brandon League into the ball game with one out here in the bottom of the seventh. League, now 30 years old, was a second round pick of the Blue Jays back in 2001. He was traded to Seattle. 
in December of 2009 for Brandon Mara. Closer at the beginning of the year for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He has lost that to Kenley Jansen. But he's got a great sinking fastball. He splits it up. He's got a nice splitter. Gets a lot of ground balls. Meister Sturis comes off the bench to pinch hit for Mark DeRosa, the starter at third. There's that splitter and Esther is quickly behind Lee. DeRosa had a good night with a home run and a walk. Slap toward third. Tough hop for Harrison. He stays with it. And Gonzalez is pulled off the bag. Harrison got a tough hop. Played the ball right on his belt buckle. He is charged with the air, his fourth air of the season. Had some time over there, but then got underneath that throw. Gonzalez does everything he can to try it. Grab that ball and then get back on the bag. But no, says Will Little. You see how that arm gets underneath it. He's off. Good call. Safe. One out. Rajay Davis one for three. He doubled and scored in before. Hit that double to center field. There goes his store as the throw from Fedorovich is a rocket. Fedorovic throwing out over 50% of the runners. That's the eighth runner he's caught. And he has a can of quick release right on the money and throws out his tourists easily. So easy. And it looked like somebody might have missed a sign. Like that might have been a hit and run or something like that with a tourist running. And wouldn't you know it, Davis then gets a single. He comes with two outs after Isturis reached on an air. He was thrown out trying to steal second. Davis with his second hit of the night. You can see Davis shaking his head as if he missed the hit and run sign. So now Rajay has a chance to make up for it and steal and get himself into scoring position. He's got 25 bags this year. He is tied with Nate McLeod for the Orioles for second in the American League. Brandon League is very deliberate in releasing the ball to the catcher. J.P. Aaron C.B. is two for three. There goes Davis swinging a miss. The throw is into center field. Davis has a stolen base. He goes to third on the throwing air by Fedorovich. His fourth air of the season. Boy, he had a great jump. Yeah, you knew that was going to be fun to watch a, a catcher who has been throwing really well against the speed of Rajay Davis one foot on the carpet and a step and a half and he's in full gear steals it easily even with a good throw and then heads into third base after the air things have got to be almost perfect to get him at second Rajay was looking to center sensing that ball was offline he saw the baseball in center and popped to his feet took third. Oh and two. Dodgers with two errors in the inning. Splitter and Aaron Sebius strikes out the airs. Don't factor in. Blue Jays leave a base runner. We'll head to the eighth. It's a eight two Blue Jays lead. Darren Oliver into the ball game.
Live audio, follow games pitch by pitch and enjoy in-game video highlights. The app is available on the iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, Android, and BlackBerry Z10. Season-long subscription packages are available. Visit BlueJays.com for more information. At Bat 13 is the official app of Major League Baseball. The pitcher in the ball game is the veteran Darren Oliver. He comes on to work the eighth inning. Mr. McGowan had a big strike at and a good defensive play to close out the Dodgers in the seventh. Huge play. Darren Oliver now in for the third time in the last four days. Meister Asturias, who came on as a pincher for DeRosa, takes over at second. With that, Lori goes from second to third, and Carl Crawford, not wasting any time, gets aboard. Goes after the first pitch from Darren Oliver. And just like that, the Dodgers will get the tying run to the plate. First ball swinging. Carl Crawford sends it back through the middle. And we've got to deal with Puig. Who is a free swinger, and I think Darren Oliver will use that to his advantage. Oliver, the veteran, against the 22 year old Yasiel Puig. Puig has been on base three times. He has two infield singles. He was also hit by a pitch. Ball in the strength. Here's where Oliver can expand the zone, throw that slow breaking ball, and see if he can't get Puig to chase. Ooh. Reach back for a little extra. 88. But it was up. And a free swinger. You can find some holes in that swing. Breaking ball bounced in the dirt. We mentioned Quig took extra batting practice in a simulated game against the Dodgers starter Ted Lilly. And they recreated game situations. Quig would hit, Lilly would simulate an inning, and then they'd both take a break. But he had some good hacks against Ted Lilly. He hit uh, one of the hardest balls I've ever seen hit. It was a line drive. That hit the back wall. Got maybe, I don't know, maybe 30 feet off the ground. Maybe 25. Two balls, two strikes. Took a close pitch. Full count. Crawford with great speed at first. Oliver is aware of that. They have faced each other a lot. Gonzalez on deck. They're just a little calling card. I know you're there, Carl. Don't leave too early. I'll pick you off. Quig has a stolen base tonight back in the fifth. The throw to first. Doesn't look like Crawford's going against Oliver. At least he's not going to break on a steal attempt. He might be moving on the pitch. Full count, not running. Puig fouls it off. Oliver staying inside the Puig. Boy, you can see the back and shoulders of Puig and his broad muscles in. He is some specimen. He was 22 years old. And he walks. First two reach against Oliver here in the eighth. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. 
and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. Well, the Dodgers 21 and 5 over the last 26 games, and they moved ahead of the Arizona Diamondbacks into first place in the NL West. Are making a game of it. Two on, nobody out. Adrian Gonzalez goes after the first pitch. Gonzalez has been on base three times today. After grounding out to end the first, he reached and scored on a fielder's choice in the fourth. Walked in the fifth, singled and scored in the seventh. And we've talked about it for a couple of days. He loves hitting in this ballpark. Would wear out the Blue Jays when he was with the Boston Red Sox. Inside. It's just one for ten against Darren Oliver. Oliver needs the ground ball. Love to get a double play right here. Number three hitter in the Dodgers lineup. And before that, he's going to check on Crawford. Great speed on the bases, obviously, with Crawford at second and Puig at first. Hanley Ramirez to follow Gonzalez. Driven to center and deep and way back. Gone. Adrian Gonzalez. A three run a home run to straightaway center field and the Dodgers have stormed all the way back. Just the second home run that Adrian Gonzalez has hit this year against a left handed pitcher and that's been the mystery this year. I think for Darren Oliver versus left handers coming into this game 340 average. Crawford singles and now Gonzalez homers to get center field. And the Dodgers are fired up. Adrian Gonzalez with his seventh home run here at Rogers Center. He goes to straightaway center field, a three run homer. And it's 9 8 Dodgers. Carl Crawford with a single. Quig walked and Gonzalez clears the bases. Hanley Ramirez, one for three with a walk. He scored a pair of runs. Caught looking at strike three. Second time he's gone down on strikes. First out of the inning. Painage right on the corner. We knew it. Well, the Blue Jays had to use six relievers in last night's game in a blowout. Oliver pitched in that game as well. And they may be feeling the effects of back to back nights. Oliver threw 10 pitches in his inning of work. Gonzalez. With his seventh career home run in this ballpark. You know, that's what happens when you don't have a true long man out in your bullpen, a guy who can eat up four or five innings. There's a drive to right. Ethier has Homer. A line drive that sneaks over the wall in right. Left handers doing the damage against Oliver here in the eighth. The third Dodger home run of the night, second of the inning. And it's a 10 8 Dodger lead. Ethier. Is that a good series? A couple of doubles in yesterday's game. A double and a home run here, and the bench for the Dodgers saying, Get up. And it gets over the wall. 
eighth year's second home run against left handed pitching this year. His seventh of the season. Seven runs now in the last two innings. Given up, the bullpen has been so good. And we showed that graphic earlier about all the innings that the Blue Jays have thrown out of the bullpen this year. Catching up to him. Broken bat, Laurie at third. Throws at Mark Ellis out. That's the second out of the inning. You know, we, we also talked about they lead the major leagues in having to throw three plus innings a night. Takes its toll. Now John Gibbons has had to use the bullpen last night because of the short start. Juan Perez did not pitch in the game last night. He was the only Blue Jays reliever that didn't appear in that game. Brett Laurie getting some direction from the bench to guard against a possible punt from Jerry Hairston. When a right-hander has a chance to face a left-handed pitcher, I don't think they're going to be dropping down bunts. Hairston hit a home run in the six. Dodgers with four runs here in the eighth. It's the fourth four-run inning they've had in this series. They Three scored four in the second, four in the sixth, and four in the seventh last night. Carl Crawford got it started. Adrian Gonzalez hit the three run homer. And then an out later, Andre Ethier homer. But you made a great point about the bullpen. They've worked a lot. And now as they close in on the 100 game mark. Showing some signs. Oliver strikes out Hairston. The inning is over, but the Dodgers have put up a four spot to take a 10 8 lead. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. Now it's time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn at the Black Gray Broadcast Studio. Take place Thursday, July 25th, on the Blue Jays and Astros hookup. The game starts at 7:07 p.m. The ticket price includes a hot dog, nachos, popcorn, peanuts, an apple, chips, and a soft drink. All this for only $39. Call the Blue Jays at 416-341-1234. To order your tickets, you can always log on to BlueJays.com or stop by most Rogers Plus locations. For the Blue Jays Grand Slam Combo Thursday, July 25th. New pitcher for the Dodgers is the right hander, Ronald Belisario. Leads the club and ranks fifth in the National League with 48 relief appearances and hasn't allowed a run, an earned run over his last 15. 
got a good sinking fastball. Can touch 95. He can cut it into left-handers. He is their setup man. He and Kenley Jansen have formed a great duo at the end of the game. Brett Laurie's had a perfect night at the plate. He has singled twice, scored two runs, had a sack fly, and two RBIs. Got to get aboard. Blue Jays are being tested once again. They had a nice, comfortable lead early in the ball game. They were up eight to three. And the Dodgers scored three and a seventh, 48. Oh, and two. Bouncing ball, Punto gets a big hop. One down. Another test for the Blue Jays, a little kick in the stomach. Dodgers scoring in each of the last three innings. One in the sixth, three in the seventh, and four in the eighth. You've come this far. Yeah. You finish it off right here. You know, they have battled. They've played good baseball, I think, tonight. Just get out there and finish it. Get a guy on. Pop a couple of home runs. Whatever it takes. Jose Reyes knows he's got to get on base. Rasmus is on deck. A couple of veterans. Burley and Oliver. And Oliver saying, man, oh man, the lefties have hurt me this year. Reyes fouls it off the catcher. Reyes has three RBIs tonight. An RBI double in the third, a two run home run in the sixth. His home run came as a left handed hitter against Carlos Marble. It was actually a hit and run with Lori at first base on the move. Breaking ball pulled it into the bullpen in right field. Five home runs, his second one batting left handed. Reyes strikes out. Belisario with his first strikeout, two down. A nice three to one strikeout to walk ratio. Off speed pitch picks up his first strikeout. Two down. Colby Rasmus entered the ballgame as a defensive replacement in the seventh. He'll bat for the first time. He's hitting in. Delky Cabrera is in spot. Two sixty five for Rasmus on the season. Bautista waits on deck. The Dodgers have been a potent offensive ball club of late. They scored nine on Sunday against the Nationals, 14 last night, and 10 more tonight. And Don Mattingly has mixed and matched his lineup. A.J. Ellis had a big night last night, career night, in fact. Didn't even hesitate. Put Jim Fedorovich back behind the plate, and he responded with two hits. Played great defense. Thrown out a base stealer. Schumacher had a big game yesterday. He's not in the lineup. Managers with their teams going in opposite directions. Matting these ball club. On the 21st of June was in last place. Rasmus with a big cut. It's a full count. But he's got a great looking sinker, doesn't he? Well, sorry, has got great sinking action. Tommy John surgery 2005 and 2006 that he missed because of that. Trying to recover from it. Belisario is 30 years old. He comes out of Venezuela. His hometown is Maracay. 
He's in his fourth season, and he's had a lot of off-field issues. He's had visa problems, and he's been suspended. He was suspended a game this year for that brawl with the Arizona Diamondbacks back on the 11th of June. He originally signed with the Florida Marlins as a non-drafted free agent in August of 1999. He spent time with the Pittsburgh Pirates organization, signed there as a free agent, and came to the Dodgers in January of 2009 as a free agent. It's his fourth season with L.A. There's a base hit to right field for Rasmus. He gets on base for Jose Bautista. A two-out single, and that'll set the table for Bautista, who homered back in the fifth. Walk single, and then did this. Breaking ball, and he hammers it to left field for number 23. That put the Blue Jays up 5-2. to two. As he mentioned earlier, the Blue Jays had a players-only meeting before the start of batting practice tonight that lasted about 70 minutes. It seemed like an extraordinary ball meeting. And we don't know what went on, of course. We don't know who called the meeting, but it was truly a players only meeting. Two outs. Blue Jays trying to snap a five game losing streak. Bautista facing Belisario for the first time. He's walked, singled, homered, and popped out. Falls behind, trying to be too perfect. Third baseman right on the line, guarding the line, no double. Bautista represents the tying run, the outfield deep. Encarnacion on deck. 3 0. Bautista walked in the first, as we mentioned. Rasmus with the two out single is at first base. Give him a shot here. 3 0. Now I think he's going to take another pitch. He takes, looks like a splitter that he throws for a strike. Or a hard slider. It's 88 miles an hour. 3 and 1, 2 outs. Woo. 94 with movement. Full count. Rasmus at first. Gonzalez is going to move behind him. So he'll have a running start. Dodgers have a 10 8 lead. Belisario to Bautista. Cut on and missed. Bautista strikes out. The eighth inning is over. We'll go to the ninth. Dodgers with a two run lead.
new, completely re-engineered 2014 Acura MDX. The luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Adrian Gonzalez loved hitting here at Rogers Center and shows why. Takes his pitch from Darren Oliver, the game changer. Into the batter's eye in center field. Three run home run to put the Dodgers finally ahead. They've been scrapping all night long to try and get ahead of the Blue Jays, and they did with that swing. Blue Jays just haven't been able to stay away from those crooked numbers. Dodgers have scored multiple runs in six innings in this series. Juan Perez making his 14th appearance comes on to work tonight. Only pitcher who did not appear last night out of the bullpen for the Blue Jays still hasn't been scored upon. The catcher Tim Petrovich will start things off. We mentioned he's had a good night, two for four. Hit his fifth double of the season in the sixth. Bounces this back to the mound. Perez goes to first. Chris Capuano is back on the bench, sitting next to Ted Lilly. Capuano started this game, went four and third, was charged with five earned runs on seven hits, but now the Dodgers in line for the win. With that out, Juan Perez has now tied Victor Cruz for the longest scoreless streak to start his career with the Blue Jays. 21 and a third. Scoreless pitching to begin his career with the Blue Jays. That was set all the way back in 1978 by Victor Cruz. Victor Cruz was the closer early on for the Blue Jays in the second year of the franchise. Nick Punto. Reaches for that outside pitch, and he is behind 0 and 2. We've seen some funky swings like that from the opposition against Juan Perez. He steps over towards the third base dugout and then fires that sinker down and away to the right handers. They just can't give up on it. He's got excellent control with his breaking ball. There's a breaking ball, it's lifted into center. Lazy fly ball. Rasmus makes the catch two outs. So Juan Perez has just set a new Blue Jays record for scoreless innings pitched to start his career with the Jays. 21 and two thirds. He stands alone. Carl Crawford. Makes a first pitch breaking ball for a strike. It was Crawford's leadoff single in the eight of Darren Oliver that started that four run rally. Kenley Jansen, the closer for the Dodgers, he is standing ready in the bullpen. Jansen is 11 for 14 in save opportunities. He has taken over for Brandon Lee. Crawford, one for five tonight, but that was a huge hit back in the eighth. Didn't waste any time. First pitch he saw, banked it right back through the middle, and they're ready to go. Meister Asturias to his right. The inning is over. Juan Perez has set a new record for scoreless innings pitch to start his career. The Blue Jays trail by two. Kenley Jansen will come on to face Edwin Encarnacion, who will start the bottom of the night. Then Adam Lynn and Meiser Asturias. Blue Jays need a rally against the Dodgers closer.
It's Blue Jays Express on Sportsnet 360 with Eric Smith. And it's connected on East Ontario, West End Pacific right after this game. Blue Jays are down by two here in the ninth. Kenley Jansen, who has taken over as the closer, makes his 48th appearance of the season. 69 strikeouts, eight walks for Jansen, almost 13 strikeouts per nine innings. He's got a great fastball, and it's got natural cutting action on it. It reminds me a lot of Mariona Rivera with that great cutting action. Two-plane breaking slider, a little bit of a curveball changeup. He comes right after you. Kenley Jansen is 25 years old. He's a converted catcher. He comes from Willemstad Curacao. He was drafted as he was signed as a non-drafted free agent by the Dodgers in 2004. Encarnacion will lead things off, followed by Linden Estudis. Can see that little late movement on that cut fastball. Very much like Mariano Rivera. We mentioned Jansen was a catcher. He was actually catching for the Netherlands team, the World Baseball Classic in 2009. Moved to the mound midway through 2009. And it's really taken off in the bullpen. He's got excellent command like we showed you. One of the highest strikeout ratios ever recorded was by this guy right here. 2011 he had a 16.1 strikeout per nine innings record. That was a major league record at the time. It has since been broken. Kind of shown with a big swing. Craig Kimbrough Broke the record. He set the record with a 16.66 strikeouts per nine. Inch. But Kenny Johnson, well, he throws it over. He's got yep. pretty good command. Stays on top of that ball. Jansen set one and two to Encarnacion. 97. But upstairs. Carnacion has not faced Jansen before this at bat. Sales up and away. It's a full count. Lind is waiting on deck. He represents the tying run. And Carnacion's got to get on. Don Mattingly's ball club has scored a ton of runs in the last three games. 33 in three games. Foul back out of play. You can see why he can be so tough on the right-handers with that ball going away from him. Right-handers have hit just 183 off of Jansen this year. Plus, he has that stature on the mound and the downward angle that is so difficult for hitters. Quite a battle going on power hitter against power pitcher. Don't you just love these in tight ball games like this with everything on the line. Encarnacion, an exceptional hitter with power. Jansen, what he brings to the mound. Jansen is 6'5", weighs 260. With that high fly ball, shallow center field. Ethier comes in, makes the catch. One down. Now for a preview of what's coming up next on Connected. Here's Ken Reed and Ivanka Osman.
Blue Jays had an 8-3 lead after the sixth inning, only to see it evaporate quickly. The Dodgers scored three in the seventh and four in the eighth. Brett Cesar was tagged with three earned runs in just two thirds of an inning, and then Darren Oliver gave up four in the eighth. Ball and a strike to Adam Lynn. Meister is Sturis to follow Lynn. Is Sturis entered the ball game as a pinch hitter in the seventh, batting for Mark DeRosa and reached on the air by the third baseman Hearst. He's got one of the best swing and miss percentages, Jansen, out on that mound. You can see why. There's a ball drilled to center. That's going to get down and go all the way to the wall. And one hops over the wall in the center field. The ground rule double for Lynn. His 21st double of the season was a line shot. One hops over the wall in the center. With great sound. Ball was down, and that's where Adam's strength is. Go down and smoke that ball into the gap in right center field. Extra base hit. So Lynn's at second with one out for Meiser is Sturis. Sturis a 251 average. Jay Davis is on deck. Davis has two hits tonight. Blue Jays have a couple of options on their bench, left-handers, if it comes to that. There's a strike. If they choose to use the left-handers versus Jansen as opposed to the right-handers, there's one of Emilio Bonifacio. Switch hitter. The bat left-handed against... Jansen, and Josh Tolle, the other. And both of them National League players, so they faced Jansen before. Three and one. Tolle on the bench. He's 0 for 2 against Kenley Jansen. Bonifacio 0 for 1. That cut fastball will come into the left hander. So they are hitting about 250 as opposed to 180 for right handers. Three and one. Way outside as Sturris is aboard. Jansen gives up the one out double and then walks is Sturris. And that's going to bring Chuck Krim out to the mound. He's been wearing out a path. From the dugout out to the mound. It's about the fourth time that we have seen him. Bonifacio comes off the bench to pinch run for Isturis. Bonifacio, with terrific speed, represents the tying run in this game. So Isturis is out. Bonifacio is in. Rajay Davis with a double and a single. He is two for four with a run scored. He also has a stolen base tonight. Blue Jays trying to rally in the bottom of the night. They trail by two. Off the plate inside.
The Blue Jays have out hit the Dodgers 14 to 13, but they're down by two runs. Cut on and missed. Ball on a strike to Davis. One and two. It's like he's using his legs a little bit more. Those last two pitches he really had a drop and drive motion that time towards home plate. Rajay stays alive. He fouls it into the seats. Tie for first among big league relievers with those 69 strikeouts that we showed you. He had 99 strikeouts last year coming out of the pen for the Dodgers. So you got to get it started. Jansen, the fifth reliever to work for the Dodgers. Another foul out of play. When a guy throws that hard, though, all you have to do is get the barrel out in front. He'll supply the power for you. Just time it up. Another one two pitch to Davis. Drives this to right. Puig has a beat on it and makes the catch. Blue Jays are down to their final out. Henley Jansen trying to close it out. Brandon League is the pitcher of record for the Dodgers. League worked two thirds of an inning. Gave up a hit, had a strikeout, and the Dodgers took the lead in the top of the eighth. Jansen looking for his 12th save. JP Aaron Sebius had two hits in four at bats. Looking for that one pitch from Jansen. Jansen gets ahead. Something that he can get elevated right now. Base hit to left field. Lind is coming around third. He's going to score. Aaron Sebia delivers an RBI single. His third hit of the night. It's a one run game. And the tying run gets a little bit closer with the speed of Bonifacio. It looked like a breaking ball from Jansen. Not the cutter. That curveball. JP's all over that. He hit that ball hard. And with Crawford playing deep in the outfield, no doubles. He's able to cut that ball off and hold Bonifacio at second. Nice extension right there from Aaron Sebia. Aaron Sebia with his 44th RBI has made it a one-run game. Brett DeLore takes ball one. Bonifacio, the pinch runner at second. Now the outfielders aren't playing deep. They're playing their regular spots right now. They don't have to play no doubles because that tying run is at second base. Fly ball to left, Crawford back on the warning track, makes the catch, and the Dodgers win. The Blue Jays score a run in the bottom of the ninth, but falls short. Kenley Jansen picks up his 12th save of the season. The Dodgers scored 10 runs on 13 hits and have taken the first two of this series. We'll be back tomorrow night. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Coming right up on Sportsnet 360, it's Blue Jays Express, connected across the channels.